Einstein clap. And today, I would like to say happy birthday to Einstein. He is such a monumental person in physics that now uh, his name is actually a synonym for smart. Anyway, uh, happy Pi Day, by the way. It's actually 3 slash 15, but yesterday was 3 slash 14, which are the first three digits of Pi, which is 3.14. So, happy Pi Day is a oh, wait. Take a few seconds to think and answer this question. Pause the video if you need some more time. All right, so what is a wave? Well, a wave or a pulse is basically just a disturbance traveling through a medium that pushes particles around in some cases. For example, think of a wave in water. Once you drop a rock in, a bunch of uh, ripples, which are actually waves, spread out from where you drop the rock. That's a disturbance traveling through the medium, which is water, right? And it's moving the water around, right? Another example is uh, making a pulse in a rope, for example. So uh, it travels down the rope. So the medium there would be the rope and the disturbance, obviously, this pull. And while waves carry energy, they will not and never will carry mass. This, def uh, this part of the definition, traveling through a medium, only applies to mechanical waves. Speaking of mechanical waves, how many types of waves do you actually think there are? How many types of waves in general. How many types of waves do you think there are? And I'll give you just a second to think about it. Uh, pause the video for more time, obviously. And there are actually two types of waves. Electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves. Whoa. So, we can basically make a tree map, I guess, of what waves are like. So, waves can be classified in two categories. Mechanical waves need a medium to travel, like, for example, sound or water waves or uh, no, that doesn't look like a water wave. A water ripples, or even just a pulse on a rope. All of those are mechanical waves. And mechanical waves can be split into two categories. Uh, transversal and uh, longitudinal. And I'll explain what both of those do in a minute. But first, what is the other type of wave? Well, it's electromagnetic waves. And the simplest one of these is just light. So, light, yup. And these things do not require a medium to travel. For example, even in space, well, and where the vacuum of space provides no medium, you can clearly see light. So, now, let's get to what transversal and longitudinal waves do. So now, uh, based on your previous knowledge of what these words mean, what do you think transversal and longitudinal waves do? Give you a few seconds to think about it. Pause the video for more time, as always. And transversal waves are waves that propagate or oscillate perpendicular to their propagation. Now, that may seem like a daunting, weird definition. So, let me draw one out for you. So, here, a transversal wave. And 
it would be going this way, right? So it's oscillating up and down, which is perpendicular to its propagation. So that's what a transversal wave is. And an example of this is, for example, these little guys over here, rope pulsars. An example of a longitudinal wave, you don't really draw them the same way you draw a transversal wave. You would draw them like, for example, on a spring. A longitudinal wave would look like this. Uh, all right, so let's create some longitudinal waves. Uh, an ideal longitudinal wave would look like this. With an uncompressed area over here, and then a more compressed one in the middle, and then an uncompressed one over here again. And this would continue on and on depending on obviously how long the spring is. So, in the normal way, we could call this a a trough and this a crest just like here we would call the bottom of the wave a trough uh, not a trog a trough and the top of the wave a crest here we would call what uh, this is which is basically rarefaction which is the spring spreading out like this That is what we call rarefaction, and you can obviously understand compression, at least hopefully. <coughs> now, I would draw amplitude on this diagram, but this is a little too cluttered, so I'm going to draw a simpler diagram. And this basically represents particles in a longitudinal wave. So as you can see, they get a lot more compressed in this area. They rarefact, I think that's the verb, in this area, and they rarefact in here too. Now, this little tiny distance between particles is what we call the amplitude of a longitudinal wave. This tiny distance between particles when the wave is compressed. And then again, we can just draw the trough and the crest. And by the way, if you get, uh, and by the way, here, let's talk about the five properties of, the five properties of waves. It is actually much easier to see. 